So hello everyone, I'm Wen Jie. So I'm a, a PhD student and from National University of Singapore. So this is a joint work with the researcher from USTC and the CI lab. So as we all know, uh, recognition, the core task of recognition system is to learn the user preference recognition from the historical interaction divide. So however, the user recognition learning is usually based on some uh, ID assumption between the training and the testing stage. It means that uh, the user, the distribution of the user interaction sequence uh, of user interaction uh, are, are the same from the training to the interaction stage, uh, to the testing stage. So this is the, how do we define the OD recognition? It means that the, uh, the user uh, interaction distribution will shift from the training to the testing stage. In this equation, we define it formally. So we, we can see that the probability of this user interacting with this item will changing from the uh, real change between the two stages. So it's decided by two factors. But it's, uh, the first one is whether this user is, uh, is posed or recommended to this item, right? So the set, uh, uh, whether this item is exposed to this user. So another uh, uh, factor is that if this item is exposed to this user or is recommended to this user, whether this user will like this item. So this is, these are two factors will affect the diffusion of the user interactions. So the uh, diffusion can be because of two uh, reasons. One is the shift of the user preference. Another is the change of the recognition policy. Uh, previous uh, research work mainly focused on the second uh, direction. They pursue uh, fairness oriented or uh, 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 the fairness oriented or some uh, devising recognition method. So they are more, more focused, mainly focused on the second stage. While in this work, we focus on the change of user preference. Uh, we assume that the user preference is decided by some user features, uh, either observed or unobserved user features. For example, our, our preference over some price, over price can be decided by the uh, our income, age, and some other factors. So in this work, we only, as the initial work, we only focus on the user preference shift caused by the observed features. For example, the car uh, consumption level, location or age, income, such, such factors. And uh, the leave, leave the uh, user preference shift caused by the unobserved feature as the future work. So as we introduced the, in the last slide, the learning user preference uh, is the core task. And uh, we usually learn the user preference from the historical interactions. If some user feature changes, for example, if the user become pregnant, if the user income increases, so the user preference will change accordingly. And this out of date interactions, the interaction in the history will become, uh, in, become incorporated to, to learn user preference. So this uh, out of date interaction will cause inoperate OD uh, recommendations. They will hinder the user preference, preference learning. So uh, the existing work with the potential of solving the problem can be divided into three parts. The first two parts, feature-based models, they will use the user feature to do the to infer the user preference. And the second part, we will use the disentangled representation to learn robust representation. But this uh, method will still be suffer from the effect of the outdated interactions. You can't dis disentangle the effect of the outdated interactions and the uh, latent uh, user features. And another solution is to use the model retraining. They can regularly retrain the model and update the user preference, right? By using the new, uh, the latest, uh, uh, the new user interactions after the feature change. So, but uh, this is a method we will face the uh, dilemma between the retraining frequency and the computation cost. To solve the problem of existing work, we propose two additional objectives for user learning. The one is uh, the first one is a strong OD generalization. Uh, they assume that uh, the new user interactions after the user feature changes are not available. We can only use the change user features to infer the new user preference. So uh, the first one is called OD generalization. A second one is called a fast, a fast, application, a fast application. So this is a objective. Uh, we all assume that uh, some new interactions will be available and we can use some new interactions to achieve Fast adaptation. 
And uh, the target is to use fewer interaction to achieve better performance. Uh, to achieve the two objectives, we assume we think that there are three uh, key considerations. The first one, we need to figure out how the user feature uh, shift will affect the user preference line. The second one is to mitigate the effect of our data interactions. We have introduced their uh, bad effect in the previous slides. Uh, the third one is to uh, reuse some and change the user preference for to accelerate the uh, fast adaptation. Because for the fast adaptation, uh, some user features will change, but some real user uh, some, uh, user preference are stable uh, over time, right? So we need to reuse the unchange the user preference. So to uh, figure out how the user feature shift uh, shift will affect the user preference, we resort to the tool of color inference. We use a color graph to inspect the interaction generation procedure. This procedure can be divided into three parts. The user features, user preference, and the user interactions. The user, uh, we, we assume that the user uh, features E will affect the user preference. And uh, our user preference will decide what kind of interaction, what kind of uh, item we will interact with. So uh, this is here a sequential uh, re relation. And uh, we split the user features E into two parts. Uh, observe the user features E1 and the unobserve the user features E2. We also di divide uh, Z into two parts regarding whether it's affected by E1, by the unobserved feature, because there are always some user preference only affected by some unobserved features. Uh, existing mass, uh, th in this figure, we can see that uh, there are two variables are observed, th uh, E1 and D. They are, these uh, variables are unobserved. So existing methods are actually learning the unobserved user preference from observed E1 and D. But they will uh, uh, they count disentangle the effect from these two features. So they will suffer from the uh, the, the outfit uh, interactions D. Uh, uh, in this formulation, we can see that the OD combination of the caused by the observed user feature shift can be formulated like this. We can formulate it as an intervention over the observed user feature E1. So we uh, conduct the intervention over this variable and we estimate if this is a variable, is, is the value is changed. So what's the interaction probability over D? So to estimate this post-intervention probability, we consider build the recommended model by following this color graph. It means to to learn the, the, uh, the structural functions between these uh, variables to describe the common relations. Uh, to achieve that, we incorporate a VE-based math framework. Uh, the one challenge of building this uh, uh, recommender model is that the E2 uh, e is unobserved, right? So we use some observed feature by using this uh, uh, encoder to in infer or to predict the unobserved user features. And then we fit the observed and unobserved feature into decoder to recover the interaction generation procedure by following this, uh, uh, this graph, the relations in this graph. So they are, they are uh, strictly the same. So we are um, uh, learning these functions uh, from the data. So we have known that uh, how the feature shift affects the user preference because we, we can learn the functions uh, to describe the color relations. And the second consideration is to mitigate the effect of our data uh, interactions. Uh, we, we use some uh, interactions to infer the unobserved E2, right? Because the E2 is unobserved. So we use the observed interaction to infer that. So, uh, so the, uh, in the, our formulation, we can see that E1 is uh, the intervention. So the intervention, the E1 is changed. So Z1 will be changed accordingly, but Z2 will be stable. Uh, under the change of the E1, because uh, C2 is summer uh, user preference only affected by the unobserved features. Uh, so in this case, we to mitigate the effect of outdated interactions, we need to estimate the effect of the outdated interaction on C1, because C1 is changed, but uh, uh, we can't use the outdated interaction to infer the changed or the new user preference. We can only use it to infer the unchanged C2. So we 
our target becomes we need to mitigate the effect of D on Z1 and uh, keep the effect of D on Z2 because Z1 is changed while Z2 is stable. Uh, to achieve that, we uh, result to the tool of causal counterfactual inference. It has three steps. The first step is to estimate the, uh, the effect of D on Z, Z2 and we uh, save the, this effect. We keep this uh, effect for the prediction. And uh, the, in the second step, we will uh, use the uh, zero vector. We assume, we, we imagine the user interaction history is empty. Uh, the user have no interaction. So we infer the new user preference. So in this way, we, we don't use the our data interaction to infer the value of the Z1 prime, Z1 prime. And finally, we use the Z1 prime and Z2 to predict the final interaction probability and use this probability to do the recommendation. Uh, so this is for all for the master craft. Uh, for the experiments, we conduct uh, experiments on both the ID setting and the OOD setting. In the OOD setting, the user features will be changed. Uh, for example, the location changes or the income changes or summer uh, age changes. Uh, so the user age changes. So uh, in, from these two uh, testings, two testing uh, manuals, we can see that from the ID to the OOD test, the performance drops a lot, right? So different methods, they all have a performance drop. It means that it's because that uh, the diffusion shift have happened, have, have happened, so the performance is not good as in the uh, ID setting. Uh, and another observation is that the variance between this method in the OOD test uh, is quite large. So it means that the, the, also their, their recognition ability in the ID testing is similar. But their OD generalization ability is uh, different, is quite different. Uh, and our method COR can use the counterfactual inference and the causal modeling to achieve better OD performance. This is uh, the, uh, the uh, this is to test uh, the fast adaptation ability. We feed the different, uh, we feed some new interactions, the interactions after the figure changed. It means the interaction in the OOD environment to, to the model to fine tuning the original recommender model. You can see that as the ratio increases, the performance increases, right? The OOD performance increases. So, uh, and our method COR can achieve better performance by using less data um, because they are, they are the performance above the, this, the lines of the baselines. So another observation is that as the ratio increases, the performance are becoming quite becoming close. Of the different the, the performance of different baselines are becoming is becoming quite close. It is because uh, as the ratio increases, more and more new interactions are used to to find used for fine tuning. This OOD setting will become another ID setting. They will have many ID interactions. So this is the reason. So, so to sum up, we have uh, uh, defined a new task of OOD recommendation. We define the, uh, the user preference shift caused by the observed user features. And uh, now we formulate the user feature shift as the intervention and uh, uh, formulate the post the definition of post interaction ability. Uh, we use a color graph to, to figure out how the features affect the user preference and uh, utilize uh, VE framework to uh, learn the causal relations in the causal graph. Uh, during the inference stage, this is uh, in the training stage to learn the VE framework. And uh, during the inference stage, we use the counterfactual uh, inference to mitigate some bad effect of the OOD interaction, out of date uh, interactions. Uh, as to future work, actually, this is, this, there are many promising uh, directions. The one is that to study the shift caused by the unobserved user features. This is a quite a, a quite a challenging problem. A second direction is to use some fine grained color relations among the user features and uh, <clears throat> uh, user preference. In this work, we only consider some coarse grained color relations between the between seven variables, so it can be improved. The third, the last direction is to incorporate the item features. We can use the item features to capture 
the user preference over the uh, item categories. So they can uh, better to facilitate the, the OOD, the OOD uh, recognition task. So that's all for today's presentation. Thank you.